For over a century, we lived under the illusion of a universal speed limit. An immutable boundary woven into the very fabric of space-time. Nothing with mass could travel faster than light, 299,792 kilometers per second. It was Einstein's law, the ultimate wall, the border that fenced in all human ambition. We dreamed of breaking it. We wrote books. Made films. Imagined warp drives in hyperspace lanes. But deep down, we knew the truth. It was all fantasy. Until now. Behind the closed doors of research labs and in whispers across peer-reviewed journals, a quiet revolution is beginning. Not one, but several mathematically sound methods of faster-than-light travel are now being taken seriously by physicists. We're not talking theory alone. We're talking mechanisms. Equations. Experiments. The speed of light may no longer be a ceiling. It may be a suggestion. This isn't science fiction anymore. It's a doorway. And on the other side, lies a new definition of what it means to move, to exist, to evolve. Since 1905, the cosmic speed limit has defined the possible. The closer something gets to light speed, the more energy it needs. And to actually reach it? Infinite energy. A physical impossibility. The dream always died there, on the edge of a number we could never touch. But the laws of physics contain loopholes. And someone finally found one. Einstein's equations forbid anything with mass from moving through space faster than light. But they never said anything about space itself. What if, instead of pushing a ship through space-time, we warped space-time around the ship? What if space became the vehicle? That's not fantasy anymore. That's warp geometry. In 1994, physicist Miguel Alcubierre proposed a concept that sent ripples through the scientific world. A warp bubble that contracts space in front of a spacecraft and expands it behind. The ship itself never moves. It sits at the center of a moving distortion. From the outside, it appears to be traveling faster than light. But technically, it's not violating relativity. The loophole had a name. And that name was Alcubierre. For years, it remained a theoretical dream. The energy requirements were immense. It demanded something exotic, negative energy density. A kind of matter we weren't sure existed. The numbers were staggering, the technology far beyond us. Or so we thought. Then came Harold White. A NASA physicist, White began experimenting with quantum fluctuations and the Casimir effect. And what he found changed everything. Tiny warp-like bubbles. Real distortions in space-time, not just math on a chalkboard. Observable effects on the nanoscale. The impossible became plausible. And suddenly, the energy requirements dropped. From infinite, to hundreds of kilograms of exotic material. Still far out, but now within the realm of the imaginable. Then the race began. Teams from Germany, the US, Japan, working independently but heading in the same direction. In 2024, the University of Potsdam ran gravitational wave simulations using LIGO data. What they found shocked them. Warp-like signatures, not theoretical, archived. Which means we may have already observed naturally occurring, or artificially produced, warp fields in the cosmos. And if we can find the fingerprint, we might reverse engineer the hand that left it. Imagine finding tire tracks on a forgotten road and using them to build your own car. That's what warp scientists are doing now. But here's the truly strange part. Three separate theoretical models now exist. Alcubierre's original, the modified Natario drive, and White's energy-efficient bubble geometry. All use real math. None break the laws of physics. All sidestep the speed of light not by smashing through it, but by stepping around it. The dream is becoming instruction. Warp drives are being discussed not just in forums of science fiction fans, but in propulsion labs, in defense briefings, in corporate skunkworks with more funding than most nations. And while the public remains fascinated with reusable rockets, the real breakthrough may already be happening behind closed doors. 
Because if warp travel becomes real, it doesn't just change transportation. It redefines civilization. Look to the stars, Proxima Centauri B, Trappist 1E. So close, yet impossibly far. But with warp? They become next door neighbors. And with that, Earth is no longer our only option. It becomes our launch pad. But time, time is where the mystery deepens. At near light speeds, time slows. Distances shrink, mass increases. Push beyond that, and causality, the relationship between cause and effect, begins to break. What happens when a spaceship arrives before it leaves? What happens when the signal outruns the sender? That's the paradox that's hot, but inside a warp bubble, those paradoxes vanish. Because the ship isn't accelerating. Space is. The pilot inside experiences calm. Normal time. No increase in mass. No relativistic distortion. Just stillness while the universe moves. It's not travel. It's transformation. And it means faster than light movement could avoid the most terrifying consequences of Einstein's universe. But the implications go deeper still. Harold White's discoveries weren't just breakthroughs in propulsion. They hinted at something more ancient. Something written into the very architecture of space-time. Those micro-warp bubbles? They weren't made. They were found. That suggests something haunting. What if the universe naturally supports warp geometries? What if the rules for bending space are already embedded in the code of reality? What if these aren't human inventions, but rediscoveries? And what if we're not the first to find them? Some of the warp signatures discovered in gravitational wave data don't match any known event. No neutron star collisions. No black hole mergers. Just anomalies. Distortions with patterns. Some physicists now wonder, are we seeing the scars of ancient engines? The gravitational wake of civilizations that no longer exist? Or perhaps, that still do? If warp travel exists out there, and we've glimpsed its residue, then the challenge isn't to invent it. It's to follow it. To trace the trails already etched into the dark by those who came before. And yet, silence. No comment from NASA. No response from DARPA. No public acknowledgement from SpaceX, even as Elon Musk hints at propulsion methods beyond chemical rockets. Harold White's lab, technically part of NASA, publishes strange findings without commentary. Observations stripped of interpretation. Experiments with no public context. It's as if the secret is already known, and the rest of us are just catching up. If a prototype exists, it will not be unveiled in triumph. It will be hidden. Buried beneath NDAs. Launched in silence, away from prying eyes. Because warp travel isn't just scientific. It's strategic. The first nation, or company, to master it won't just dominate Earth. They'll define what it means to be human in the cosmos. We're standing at the threshold of a new kind of species. According to the Kardashev scale, we're not even a type 1 civilization yet. We haven't harnessed all the energy of our own world. A type 2 controls the power of its star. A type 3, its galaxy. But a species that manipulates space-time, that bends reality to its will? That's something else entirely. Warp technology isn't the end goal. It's the key to unlocking everything else. Energy from vacuum fluctuations. Control of gravity. The birth of artificial micro-universes. The merging of physics and consciousness itself. Warp drives aren't just engines. They're incantations in the language of the universe. And we've just learned the first syllable. For centuries, we mapped the stars as if they were fixed, distant, unreachable. But space is not a grid. It's a fabric. One that folds, stretches, collapses, if you know where to press. We were never meant to crawl across it. We were meant to shape it. And now, perhaps for the first time, we can. We are not building ships. We are building the next version of humanity. A version no longer limited by the speed of light. 
A version that doesn't travel through the universe, but begins to shape it. The question is no longer if warp is real. It's who will reach it first. And when that first ripple in space-time spreads across the stars, what will be watching on the other side? If this idea lit a fire in your imagination, don't let it fade. Because we're not done. Next time, we'll go even deeper, into the discovery NASA refuses to discuss, and the gravitational anomaly that could rewrite the laws of physics. Until then, look up. Because the stars are no longer far. They're waiting.